McKenna asked me to do this, I was of course flattered and honored to be here and then I immediately became terrified. I haven't given a presentation of any kind since college and so surprise, surprise, I fell back on my college days and started procrastinating. I procrastinated like crazy. And I started thinking about it and realized that I could actually take this in a number of different directions. Uh, I started thinking about that and then I thought about crossroads and that brought me back to trivia, which is kind of what got me started here. So uh, first, a little trivia. <laughs> uh, when people think of trivia, they think of a number of different things. You've got, uh, you know, the people, it's, it's information that is useless. It's good to have, it's fun. But otherwise, other than, you know, game night, there's not much else to do with it. Um, can you see that? Good. <laughs> Other people think of, you know, a certain popular quiz show, right? And so that's knowledge that does come in handy. Um, not necessarily useful, but if it's a daily double, then you're in good shape. Um, other people, like Max said, talk about or think about trivia and one of the dozen or more trivia games that happen in bars all over Macon. We figured it out one time, and for a while there, you could go and play trivia every night at a different place. You can play two or three games a night on certain nights. Um, for various wagers, wages, <laughs> but uh, I like to take trivia and think about where it actually came from. Uh, the word trivia comes from the Latin. In, 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 in antiquity, it was a, uh, a way to refer to the three basics of education, the, the fundamental things that everyone had to know in order to be a free Roman. Um, they are grammar, rhetoric, and logic. These are studies right now that people take for granted. We don't think about it a whole lot. And at the time, it was sort of the same way. Unless you're actively studying grammar, rhetoric, or logic, it's not anything that you really want to focus on. Uh, it also comes from the Latin for three roads. And so at intersections in Rome, or all over, all over the empire, you would find these monuments that uh, were inscribed with directions to the nearest town. Uh, sometimes it was just local, you know. Excuse me, folks. Like I said, I was terrified. I'm way out of my uh, comfort zone here because normally I have all the answers. <laughs> See? <laughs> now, uh, these markers would be inscribed with information about the, the local area, uh, directions to the nearest town. Uh, it could also be politics. It could be like uh, so-and-so's in charge here. It could also be like local gossip. Don't trade with this guy because he'll take your money. Um, <laughs> information that is useful to have right there, but other than that, it's not, uh, it's not super useful. Trivia. So uh, I started tr playing trivia with my wife years ago in college when uh, around the same time that I had to choose a major, <laughs> sort of a... a what would you say, a metaphorical crossroads in my life? Because then I was deciding which direction I would go. Um, I chose geography because I like the idea of geography. I like the way they described it to me. And I like the notion that everything happens somewhere. And what they taught us in geography was that it happens there for a reason. Um, there's various reasons for various things. And uh, I don't know, it was just an interesting concept. So why do things happen where they happen? Uh, you can actually take that in a number of directions. Things happen where they happen for any number of reasons. But let's talk about Macon. It happened the way that it happened. Geographically, sure. It's on the fall line. It was a major hub of transportation for a long, long time. Uh, it, it, it is where it is really to me because this is where two cultures interacted for the first time, where the natives and the settlers kind of came together. And we know how that ended, but uh, yeah, that's Macon. <laughs> so back to geography. Um, while I studied geography, I became fascinated with something called GIS, and I'll talk about that in a little while, but I, I got fascinated by GIS because I spent a couple of semesters, instead of studying, playing a, a PC game called SimCity. If you're familiar with SimCity, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It lets you build a little town, lets you watch it grow. You can destroy it if you want to, but Sort of a fundamental thing about the game is the idea of multiple layers. 
You build your streets and your buildings, and beneath that you have your water lines, and beneath that you have your terrain, and all of these things kind of match up and go together to build a little town. Um, <laughs> Matt gave that one away too. <laughs> um, and that really kind of is what got me into GIS, because it's a very similar concept. Uh, the idea that things that we see are not all necessarily seen. There's stuff going on underneath everything. Stuff going on underneath Macon right now that nobody knows about or hasn't thought about in centuries. It's, it's fascinating. So uh, GIS, Geographic Information Systems. Um, people see, see or hear about GIS and they go, oh, maps, computers, technology, whatever. At its root, what GIS does is combine a visual representation of an area, you recognize downtown, um, with information about that area. So not only do you see the streets and the buildings and the parcels that make up all the land, you also see information about those things. You can see everything from population demographics to rainfall, elevation. All of that stuff goes together. You can't see the, you can't see the table down there. But all that stuff comes together and gives us a tool for making decisions. Um, not a super great slide, but you can use that information any way you want to. Not super useful all the time, but when you need it, it's good to have. Uh, Walgreens uses GIS to decide where to put their next store. Uh, they know that their biggest customers are soccer moms, so they build stores in between soccer fields and residential districts. CVS caught on quick, and they just build across the street. <laughs> It's true. McDonald's and Burger King have a very similar relationship. So I, I, I put these up here because, and I don't know if it's going to come across very well or not, because I wanted to show you a little bit more about the layers that we can look at. So right now you've got sort of a, a broad view, 18,000 feet above Macon. You see the river, and then you get a little bit closer. You see, oh look, I, I went too far, sorry folks. And you can zoom in and say, oh look, there's downtown. I still see the river. And you can get a little bit closer and say, oh, look, now we're getting someplace I recognize. And then even closer, you're like, hey, look, I was just there. And then underneath that, you've got the streets, the parcels, and all that stuff. We can get landowner information if we want to, uh, traffic patterns, things like that. And underneath all of that is more what I do for a living is look at the water and the sewer lines that go underneath Macon. Uh, it's interesting to me that this stuff is underneath our feet and we rarely ever think about it unless it breaks. Um, those two water lines right there go in opposite directions. No one's really sure why they were put in over a hundred years ago. Um, it's just interesting stuff. I like the idea that the layers are there even if we don't always necessarily see them. So uh, that's GIS. At this point my notes run out. Um, I could go back, I think this is going to go forward for me. If it doesn't, I'll try it. Um, yeah, it is. So this is from the project that, that Mac also gave away. Um, <laughs> and what I did was ask people to draw a map of their making. Um, I don't have a whole lot specifically to say, but I found it intriguing, the differences and the similarities between what people put up there. Yeah. So uh, the ages range from 8 to 62. And like I said, it was uh, surprising the similarities between all the maps. I'm not trying to critique people's cartography skills or anything like that. What I'm interested in, though, is the similarities and differences. I think it's kind of cool. Um, this one's from work. It's actually a water line that somebody drew. <laughs> You're like, why is that there? I don't know. So uh, some of them are cool and some of them are not. But I, I got to this point in my presentation, I was trying to struggle with a way to kind of bring the local idea together. And it came to me earlier, walking down the alley, that there is, uh, there is something that, that kind of ties in. That one went fast. I might go back through these. Um, and that's one of, the, one, of my favorite, one of my favorite things that I learned in geography was the idea that uh, all things are related, but near things are more related than things separated by distance. So. It's an interesting concept, and that's really about all I have to give you besides that brief introduction to GIS and trivia. Um, but think about that. We, we are all kind of similar. We're all part of the same local group. And while we, we, we do have a lot of similarities, 
know, that was it. <laughs> we also have uh, we also have our dis differences, but um, yeah, that's the only idea I really have to give to you is that near things are more related than far things, and we share that. So uh, thanks everybody. I appreciate your time.